Welcome to the Watercress line. My name's Julian Holland and I'm the co-author of this book, The Times Britain Scenic Railways. The book was co-written with David Spavin, who lives in Edinburgh. He's got a railway background, having worked for British Railways for many years, and my railway interest is more of a hobby. We were also able to be able to split this book up into two logical sections so that David wrote the chapters on Scotland and the north of England and I wrote the chapters on southern England, Wales and the Midlands. The idea behind the book was to try and get over to people the absolutely enormous amount of beauty that we have in this country that can be seen from a train. For such a small country we have got an absolute wealth of very interesting and scenic railway routes ranging from the very famous ones such as the coastal route from Exeter to Plymouth uh, along the seawall at Dawlish, the line through central Wales, uh, the line along the Cambrian coast in North Wales, further afield in Scotland the very famous West Highland line of course which a lot of people rate as one of the most scenic railway rides in the world. We've tried to include in this book not only the sort of more well-known routes but also some of the smaller lines such as this one here, the Watercress Line, which is, is run by mainly by volunteers and was closed following Dr Beach's report in 1963. Um, it, it hung on to life for 10 years and then was closed in 73. And then from 77 onwards, it was gradually reopened. Um, and there, 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 there are many of these lines all over the country, a lot of it which pass through the most beautiful scenery. I've always been in love with railways you know, since I was a small kid. Wherever we went, on holiday or whatever, we went by train, and it was steam train. My father built me a model railway in the attic, and then I went, when I went to secondary school, I met a lot of these lads who were already train spotting, and I thought, I'll give that a go. And uh, I never looked back. And I have got all these notebooks dating from the 60s, all my visits, um, all over the country. They've inspired me to start writing again. And actually, just looking at these notebook pages, it brings it all back to life to me. I can actually remember um, 50 years ago, if I look at a date and name place, I can remember being there. Um, so they're a very good aid memoir in my writing. Well, we've now reached Medstead and Four Marks, uh, which is the highest station in southern England, 844 feet above sea level. We'll now be going downhill to Alton to the valley of the River Way. The Watercrest Line is one of the most popular steam heritage railways in, in southern England. You can catch a train from Waterloo straight to Alton, cross the platform and hop onto a steam train down to Alsford. We're now going to get back on this train, uh, which is being hauled by a Southern Railway Schools class locomotive, number 925. It's called Cheltenham, after the famous public school in Cheltenham. Uh, and we're going to wend our way over the Alps to Medstead and Formarks, uh, where we'll stop, and then we'll carry on to Rockley, uh, where the main locomotive works and engine shed is. And now and we're pulling out of Rockley Station. Uh, we're just going to pass the Watercrest Line's locomotive works and engine sheds. Uh, there's quite a collection of steam engines here. Um, this is where they, they restore locomotives, keep them in running order, uh, and it's all manned by volunteers. They're all unpaid, um, and without these guys, some of you can see here, um, there's some there on this locomotive. Um, th these lines would, wouldn't, wouldn't operate. One of the features in our new book, we have these lovely old 1950s uh, restaurant car menus from the, the, the trains, the express trains that used to operate then. These two are from two famous uh, Western region expresses of the 1950s, uh, both of which are included in my new book. A bottle of uh, champagne was 47 and sixpence. We've got some Australian emu burgundy here for 10 and sixpence a bottle or three shillings a glass. We also decided to include some of the more lesser known uh, lines such as Heritage Railways, such as the Watercrest Line, which we're travelling on at the moment, the West Somerset Railway, the North Yorkshire Moors Railway, because all of them pass through the most wonderful scenery. And then I also thought it would be really interesting to put in some unlikely candidates like miniature railways. One of the most wonderful features of this book is the early 1960s Bartholomew's mapping, 
which fortunately for us shows all of the railways before Dr Beachy closed them. Um, and they're very beautiful in their own right, they're works of art I think, um, and they, they really bring these routes to life. Uh, they, they're very three dimensional in appearance and uh, we, you know, we, we're really very grateful to Harper Collins for uh, you know, to be able to supply these wonderful maps. The most unlikely candidate in this book, and one of my favourites, is the Docklands Light Railway in London, which I think is absolutely enthralling, and I highly recommend it to anybody who's interested in travelling on, on a scenic railway. The culmination of, of my formative years spent standing on drafty station platforms and visiting dirty engine sheds can be seen in this new book. Through my hobby, I was able to travel the length and breadth of Britain by train, and visit some of the most way out places, obscure places which I would never have gone to and my knowledge of geography now of our country is immense because of my train spotting hobby.